At this point, it's no secret that analog horror has sort of taken over the horror side of the internet over the past few years, at least on YouTube. It's not too surprising, I mean, it's a very unique way to tell a story, after all. But have you ever thought to yourself, well, analog horror doesn't really do it for me. I don't have any nostalgia for that era. If this is something you've felt before, then look no further than the up-and-coming genre of digital horror. Digital horror is sort of a derivative of analog horror in the sense that it utilizes that same sort of nostalgic feeling from an era, but instead it opts to primarily pull from online nostalgia, generally from the first 10 years of the new millennium. I've covered digital horror on the channel in the past in the form of Cheskid's Archive, and while that one is more of an ARG, it does have its roots set in the medium of digital horror. The genre has been on the rise recently, starting to even take precedent over analog horror in new discussion, and that's almost entirely thanks to a series named Lacey Games, which has sort of blown up. Lacey's frames itself as a series of lost flash games targeted towards younger girls that came out in the mid-2000s. They feature Lacey, a young girl with turquoise hair, as the main playable character. Currently, there are three videos, each portraying Lacey in a different scenario, and today, I want to go through them all with you and uncover the dark secrets and themes hidden within Lacey Games. This will obviously contain spoilers, so make sure to go watch the original and please support the series creator Ghost Tundra. Alright, let's get into it. The first video in the series is Lacey's Wardrobe, and it's framed as a lost 2006 flash game. The game begins with a call to action. Lacey has a busy day today. In the morning, she will attend a picnic in the park. Then in the afternoon, she must go shopping. Finally, she will have a date tonight with the cutest guy. Phew. But there's only one problem. She has no idea what to wear. Can you help Lacey put together the cutest outfits for each situation? And from there, we have our gameplay loop established. The player gets to pick from a variety of hairstyles and outfit options to dress Lacey exactly the way they like. It's easy to see how this game could be fun and engaging for a kid on the internet in 2006. I'd also like to add that I think the fantastic direction of the series shows almost instantly with the way that the frame is composed. The color used in Lacey's hair is an almost direct color contrast to the pastel pink used throughout the room and UI. The music is also a jam. And we can see the track names in the bottom left corner actually match the task. After the player finishes picking her outfit, we see Lacey outside for her picnic, and what the hell is that thing? We transition back into Lacey's room, now tasked with dressing her to go shopping. I'm pretty sure the gameplay is identical, aside from the room now reflecting the sunset hours outside. But before we can get too comfortable... Lacey gets a phone call. Lacey. Lacey, did you see my stacks, Lacey? I can wait to meet up, Lacey. I want to. Have a good time tonight with you, Lacey. Tonight. Bye-bye. Uh, so... Now, the player just has to, like, finish getting her dressed while that thing person from the forest stalks her outside her window, and, uh, once she finishes and goes to the mall, Lacey gives us a cry for help. Please help. He's going to kill me. If we go back to her room, and she has to get dressed for her date now. The stalker starts endlessly knocking on her front door. There's text that says, There is a gift on your doorstep. And when the gift is revealed to us, it's an incomprehensible censored glob of red and crimson, which is subsequently cut off by another phone call. Open the door. 
We go right back to dressing her, but not before we get the most bone-chilling realization in the entire video. Lacey starts directly pleading with the player, begging them not to let her outside to meet what awaits her. Please don't make me go outside. Please. Please. She's aware of what's going on, as well as the fact that she has zero control over the situation. And lack of control is textbook horror. And it's brilliant. If we assume that Lacey is conscious within the game, then this is a situation she may have to relive every single time someone plays the game. Unfortunately for her, the player finishes the outfit and lets her outside. But not before Lacey can express the terror in where she's just been placed. What have you done? Then we get one more look at our killer. He says, I ate her remains so that we will be together forever. I love you, Lacey. And thus ends the game. Back to the title screen we go. Honestly, I don't understand how the horror in Lacey's can be so good. It manages to find the perfect balance between portraying an interesting narrative while actually being scary and visually authentic and pleasing at the same time. It's a really impressive feat that I think goes undeservingly unnoticed, even despite how popular it is. And with all that said, the direction only gets better in the next video, Lacey's Diner. The second video is titled, Disturbing Secret Ending Found in 2007 Flash Game, Lacey's Diner. Even just by the title, you can notice a stark contrast to the approach that was used previously, and the beginning of the episode confirms it, as we have someone actually describing what's going on now from their own point of view. The player describes having found the game on a Flash archive site and feeling nostalgic because they used to play a bunch of Lacey games in their childhood. This was a great decision, because that line alone opens the door to many possibilities within the series. The player goes on to describe how they found an ending they never came across in the past, though, which seems to imply that the games weren't always messed up like the one that we just saw. Then, we get our new instructions. Lacey is about to open her brand new diner. However, she will need your help to keep up with so many hungry customers. How to play. Add the correct items that Lacey requests into the main bowl. When you're done, it's time to serve the customers. However, don't take long. You know how people get when they're hungry. Then we cut to the kitchen. The specific dish instructions come from Lacey and the timer in the corner begins counting down ominously. The player knows that the timer is incredibly generous, but they found that something strange happens when you run out of time. They let the timer run down and start playing the game normally, but towards the end, something strange does happen. Despite all that, the player seems to finish with almost no time on the clock, and the dish is completed as intended. Unlike the previous game, this game has multiple phases. Once you finish cooking the dish, you also have to serve it. The player states that they're going to play through the three days where you do the same thing to try and show off the game's normal ending. Now, the player wants to display what happens when you do run out of time. You're gonna notice that this video has some fast and difficult to decipher sequences, so I'm gonna cover those after it's actually done. It seems like if you take it too long, the customers just leave. But there's always tomorrow. We get to see Lacey's diner from the outside, and Lacey says, This is all I have. And the customers are hungry and unforgiving. If I fail, I see no other option. Other than... Yeah. 
Yeah. All of that happened on screen for the player. And apparently, the second day is even worse. Why can't these fucking bastards just wait three minutes for their fucking food? I'm trying my hardest, and yet I'm almost running out of money to survive. This isn't fair. It isn't fair at all. It isn't fair. I hate all of them. I hate them. I hate them. Tomorrow, I'm going to give them something to eat, alright? They'll face what they did to me. Welcome to Lacey's Diner. As you can see, the ingredients have all changed in some of the last things that you'd ever want to put into a meal, such as meth, broken glass, cigarette butts, and what's implied to be Lacey's own uncle. There's a plethora of screens full of information, but like I said, I do want to save those. Finally, we're presented with the finished dish. Then we get a genuinely nauseating sequence of the dish being served with gross noises and... It's closed. This is it then. Lacey has taken her own life. And the player's reaction is about what you'd expect it to be. The video seems to end there, but the final frame of the video is easy to miss if you're not paying close attention. All right, so I think in terms of raw horror, the first video may have been better in my eyes, but in terms of direction and writing, this one's unmatched. There's a lot of themes to unpack, but I think the one that's most evident is what comes from failure to meet expectations and how much of a burden that can have on someone. Not everybody handles pressure the same, and some people, like those battling depression and anxiety, struggle much more than others. Not only that, but the stakes are increased tenfold when you're placed into a situation in which you literally cannot fail, or your life will come crashing down. It seems like this is the situation that Lacey has been placed in. This diner is literally all she has. It's her life. If the diner falls, so does she. But having worked in food service, I know what impatient and hungry people are like. People who are entitled often don't treat the workers at restaurants like people, or attempt to understand what they might be going through. To them, they're just means to an end. What use are you? you can't even do something as simple as get them their food. But it runs even deeper. There's a clear underlying narrative in the episode as well. Right before the horror really started, there were two screens that I can't really make out much of. It seems to say, Page 31, figure 58. What growing up is all about. Put me on death row. Skid rope and brown boy. They fished in the river and pulled out my body pronouncing me dead in the name of the but in between. I had blown out the brains. And the other one says, While it was still twitching, for memories are no substitute, part of the ingrained paranoia was owed directly to the fact that they used to teach kids such perverse little bizarre lies that they passed off as the truth. Other than that, most of the underlying story is all revealed in the short segments between ingredients in the final game. These moments were hard to forget because they were super glued from my heels to my thighs, and not even the strongest bird beak could peck it off. The smoke tinted me in grey forever, and it made me tear up so much I almost cried in front of him once. Never again. First they dominated the ceiling of my room, but then I started seeing them everywhere. Bugs and bites and dirt and ash and vomit, where they shouldn't have been. They were all... but crisp and very jumpy, and I wanted to suck it all inside of me like a reverse frog dissection and end it all for once. He lived in a world of his own where he was desirable and sensual, and he got so deep into his lies that he believed what the computer would whisper to his ears. And when he looked down, he saw me on my little bruised knees smiling back at him, the exact size of his sweaty palms. 
Even though they could be shaky, he was always the type to see the positive in things, and he couldn't keep the mayo from raining all over it like a mad fever dream. What a relief! Any sense of wrongness was dissipated long before it got into his mind, and screams were inaudible to his ears. It was just bliss. Hopefully the meaning of all this should be clear, as unfortunate as it is. Lacey seems to have been a victim of an exceptionally traumatic childhood. She was likely abused in numerous ways by her uncle, who she may have been forced to live with growing up, as parents are never really mentioned, which is a whole thing on its own. He was incredibly neglectful and fully absorbed in the pursuit of dopamine, doing only what would please him in the moment with little care for what would happen to that innocent little girl who was his own blood. This is what Lacey's Diner is really about. Trauma, neglect, failure, and the results. The final episode in the series, as of now, Lacey's pet shop is double the length of the previous. I think that's enough precedent, so let's get straight into it. The video starts with Lacey and her MP3 player, and we seem to have an interview with someone named Grace, who goes on to describe her experience dealing with many people finding the horror portions of Lacey's games. Meaning the games are tangible and actually happening in the world and not just something that we, the audience, get to see. Apparently, one of the creators of the website that originally hosted Lacey Games has credited her as being a co-creator, to which she seems to deny. Eventually, she did play one of the games after incessant complaining from upset parents to check out what was going on, and as it turns out, they were right. It was called Lacey's Pet Shop. Lacey has one of the most famous pet shops in town. People come from all over to buy their perfect little furry companion and it will be your job to help her today. Instructions. Listen to the client's animal demands, then use the items on the bottom row to customize them and get them all ready for their new loving homes. Remember, the animals from Lacey's Pet Shop should always be perfect for their new owners. Good luck. From there, as is to be expected with this kind of horror, the first one is pretty inoffensive, but it already starts getting strange with the second, where the cat is forced to be dyed and wear contacts and glasses for the owner. Lacey doesn't seem to mind this too much, though. As is expected, the demands made of Lacey get more and more ridiculous as time goes on. Like making a bird emo, or Jesus Christ, what is that for? Okay, this is gonna get pretty bad if that's the standard now, isn't it? Oh, okay. Uh, the next guy asks for a, a bunny without ears, a tail, or legs because they're distracting? Uh, Lacey doesn't look too comfortable anymore. Next is the final pet. Oh, great. It's a point and click adventure now. Where am I? I can click here to go left. The cat is blocking my way. Should I try speaking to it? Hiss, I won't let you pass. This is the most awful day ever, Hiss. I was chasing a bird, and the bird stole my skin. I've been hurt, so I will hurt others. When going to the left, Lacey finds the cat's skin, and eventually returns it, and it says, That's so kind of you. I'm cute again. Sorry for being so moody. Meow bad. You may pass. Then, we proceed to the house. I must click on the door. 
Once the house is entered, Lacey first checks the right room to see a group of humanoid pigs eating in the dining room. Then we get a quick sequence of text. I've always known what you are. From the moment you first touched me when I found myself stepping over remains of your skin glued to the floor. You have no regards. I had none either. You squealed like a pig, just like a pig. This had been my childhood dream, the one you took from me. I collected all those bruises for years. My spine hurt as if a needle went through each segment. Once I got used to it, I didn't think about it anymore. But you made me think about it forever when you made that mistake. You made a mistake. You took my angel away. You took my angel away. You took my angel away. You took my angel They're gone. Then Lacey goes to the left. It's the living room. She says, I feel like crawling inside of it. Please click it. Yes, I know no one forced me back inside, but this pain just hurts so comfortably. Oh, I found a key in the middle of my edgy moment. Now it feels dumb. Upon re-entry to the main hall, all of the pictures change to that of a dog, and it returns to normal just as quickly. We go upstairs. Uncle, have you seen Puddles anywhere? I can't find her. I checked everywhere. Everywhere. Stop laughing. Lacey checks the bathroom. It's always filled with blood in horror games, but this is just lemonade. I've tasted it. I'm not afraid of myself. Let's look just for a little bit. Then, we get a terrifying sequence. And it sticks and it smells. Oh, I get it now. Someone melted here. Pulverized remains enter my pores. Blood and, sh and the rest of an eye. I suck it all up. My legs smell and turn yellow. We re-enter the hall. Now all that's left is rooms one and two. Lacey's room. I was thinking of getting a cat this time. Yes, a small fluffy kitten. I really, really want a cat. We would do all sorts of stuff together, like getting ice cream. I could have some right now. <laughs> I'm so hungry right now. It's been days, but I just can't leave. I can't. He's still under the bed. He'll look at me. But after all of this is over, maybe I could go shopping. I could go to a record store and buy CDs of my favorite songs. I will have so much fun. It will be so fun. I will listen to them all day long. My sweet little doggy. My little angel. I couldn't take it anymore. You can hurt me all you'd like, but you weren't allowed to take it from me. I will let you f***ing rot. I can click here to end it all. Should I light myself on fire and wake up? Goodbye.
Phew, it was just a nightmare. I only then realized the other co-founder, Rocio, was hiding a lot of things from me. We went our separate ways in like 2010. I'm not even sure she's still alive to be honest with you. And that was Lacey's pet shop. Jesus Christ. Let's try to break this down. So, the main theme being explored here is obviously about Lacey's pet, which is expertly introduced in the form of a pet shop flash game. We also learned a decent bit about the people who actually created Lacey's, and we know that someone is interviewing a character named Grace to get some information clarified, and even she doesn't know where the game's original creator went. We also learned that the website that originally hosted Lacey Games was called LaceyGames.com and began in 2004. At the 6 minute mark, the video changes into a point and click adventure in which we get to see an abstract interpretation of Lacey's childhood home. I believe the pig people we saw in the dining room could have been a representation of the way that she sees her family, or at least her uncle, considering she goes on to describe him as a pig right after. However, considering the size of the house, I don't think she lives with the rest of her family, assuming they still exist, because there were only two bedrooms upstairs. In the living room, she comments on the gruesome painting on the wall, saying it's pretty. And here, when she crawls into the cage willingly, I think this is where we unlock some pretty deep symbolism. Lacey grew up being abused. It's all she's ever known. And I believe the cage represents her feeling of being trapped in that cycle of abuse. But despite all of that, she finds a painful comfort in being in the cage, being in the situation. Once this trauma has established itself as normal, leaving it for the comfort of other people's definition of normal can be indescribably difficult. But to outside observers, leaving a traumatic or abusive situation might seem really easy sometimes. I mean, the key is right there. Well, Lacey found her key. The scene in the bathroom is one that I have the least explanation for given current knowledge, but I couldn't help but be astounded by this part. I'm not afraid of myself. Let's just look for a little bit. I'm Lacey. It's a sequence with an indescribable sadness. And the part after is one of the most disturbing and uncomforting things I've seen in internet horror. If I had to give an explanation, I believe this sequence could be implying that Lacey games were created as an outlet for the original creator's own trauma within the universe, and we don't really know where that creator went because Grace says that they fell out of contact in 2010 and that she doesn't even know if that person is still alive. Remember when I said Lacey had found her key just now? Well, that key was killing her uncle. It was so simple in retrospect that it made her feel dumb. After all, he killed her angel, the only thing that was keeping her together. Of all the terrible things that he had done to her and said to her, he had finally made the most crucial mistake and he didn't even know it. Obviously, she didn't know what to do with his body, so she stuffed it under the bed until it was rotten. Then, she woke up, as if it was just a bad dream. Throughout the Lacey series, Lacey has always died at the end of every episode. For someone who never really did anything wrong, unless she herself had something done to her, it's tragic that she's consistently met with some of the worst possible things that can befall somebody. It's evident that Lacey has almost no regard for herself, and she seems to be living to make others happy. 
In all of these games, she's trying so hard to please the people around her. Her uncle, her dog, her customers, but it's never enough. And everyone has a breaking point. Within the confines of these games, Lacey is doomed to die over and over and over again. And there's nothing she can do about it. Lazy Games offers a unique horror experience unlike anything else I've ever seen. In my opinion, it's difficult to come across any horror on the internet with thematic writing this well executed, and the art and disturbing visuals are ridiculously well done. All of my props goes to Ghost Tundra, the creator of the series, and I'd like to ask all of you to please go subscribe to them and give them all of your support. I'm excited to see what horrors they have in store for Lacey in the future. If you had a good time, it would mean the world if you subscribed for more content like this, and turned on post notifications so you never miss a video. If you want to support me further, as of now, channel memberships should be live, and the $5 tier will grant you early access to videos. And you can also find me on Patreon or Ko-fi if you want to support me extra. That being said, that's going to be all from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time.